Our first speaker today is Dr. Brian Hutler, a fellow at Johns Hopkins University. His presentation is entitled, Two Conceptions of Anti-Establishment. When should courts enforce religious arbitration agreements? Dr. Hutler, welcome. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Lederell, and thank you to the Kenby Forum and Dr. Bombach for uh, inviting me and for organizing this event. Okay, so I'm interested in the relationship between religious arbit arbitration agreements and constitutional religious freedom protections, especially the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. And I've explored the argument that religious arbitration agreements might be in some tension with at least one strand of Establishment Clause <laughs> doctrine, namely the idea that the government should not delegate a governmental function to religious organizations. So this principle was expressed by the court in Larkin versus Grendel's Den, a case in which the Supreme Court struck down a state law that delegated enforcement obligations of a liquor license law to religious organizations. The court appealed to a similar principle in Curious Joel, a case in which a state law would have delegated the operation of an, of an entire public school district to a Jewish community in New York State. Now, one might argue that a secular civil court's enforcement of a religious arbitration agreement is a delegation of governmental function in an analogous, an analogous sense. By enforcing a religious arbitration agreement, the court forces the parties to take their dispute before the religious arbitrator, generally over the objection of one of the parties. That's typically why the dispute comes before the civil court. As such, the court delegates its responsibility to resolve civil disputes to the religious organization. And uh, it matters for establishment clause purposes that the arbitration is religious, not secular. That is, it's different from the cases in which the court delegates its responsibility to a secular arbitrator. However, it could be argued in, re in response to this line of thinking that courts ought not to weigh in on legal disputes that turn on questions of religious belief or doctrine. That point has come up already today. Um, that's another general principle found in um, Establishment Clause doctrine. And so perhaps when entering into a religious arbitration agreement, um, you might argue that entering into such an agreement suffices for at least some parties or in some cases to make what would have been a secular legal dispute into a matter of religion, um, whose resolution properly turns on a religious question. And, and if that's correct, then courts should enforce religious arbitration agreements in keeping with the religious question doctrine. I'm not completely convinced that that's correct. I think that in addition to the concern about delegation of governmental functions, the establishment clause also requires that for certain, at least core governmental functions, when religious organizations also perform these functions, the government must ensure that all people have a meaningful secular alternative. Are you trying to cut me off? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm almost done that all people have a meaningful secular alternative to these religious providers. I call this the voluntariness principle and the court has expressed this concept or something like it in Selman versus Simons Harris, a case in which the court upheld a law allowing school choice vouchers to be used at religious schools, but only on the condition that secular public school alternatives remain available for all students. Now, the voluntariness principle suggests a different sort of establishment clause concern for parties who wish to avoid religious arbitration. Enforcement of religious arbitration agreements leaves them with no alternative to religious arbitration. So I think I want to suggest that this principle may raise at least some establishment clause concerns for enforcement of religious arbitration agreements by courts in some contexts. To be clear, I think that even if something like that argument is correct, there are still many contexts in which religious arbitration agreements should be enforced especially when the underlying dispute really does, does in fact turn on genuine religious questions that secular courts should not resolve. And generally, I think that if there were no prior objections or any evidence of unfairness in the arbitration process, then decisions made by religious arbitrators pursuant to a complete and fair resolution process should be enforced by courts, as it were, after the fact. So uh, in conclusion, thank you for listening. And I, I hope that you'll accept that my notes of skepticism here are offered in good faith and in, in the overarching spirit and value of religious freedom in our society. Thank you all.